The pandemic got us into a reflective space and made us look inward to see what we can do for the world at large. As a self-expression coach, I became a catalyst for women and started Vani, a one-on-one coaching program for women on finding their voice, to speak up, to be visible. As a storyteller, I spotted that there were many ordinary people amongst us leading extraordinary lives, making a difference to the world, and they needed to be heard. Thus was born You and I with Rashmi Shetty, where amazing personal journeys with their uniqueness and individuality are showcased. A reaffirmation of the fact, open your eyes wider, the world is far more beautiful when we acknowledge the presence of both you and I. guest today is Dimple Parmar, someone who knows firsthand what it's like to face cancer up close. She chose love and married her husband even when she knew he had only six months left. Though she lost him to the disease, that tough experience gave her a new purpose. Dimple is the founder of cancer care startup ZenOnco.io and the NGO Love Heals Cancer. These are not just organizations. They are her way of filling the gaps she saw when dealing with cancer herself. She wants to help as many people as possible live better and longer lives when facing this disease. Educated at IAM Calcutta and certified in integrative oncology from Arizona State University, Dimple is all about mixing compassion with knowledge and technology. Through her startup, zenonco.io, she supports patients with value-based integrative oncology care to improve their quality of life, leading to better clinical outcomes and extending lives. It's inspiring how she has turned her personal loss into a mission to help others. She's all about making life better for those dealing with cancer. Her goal is very clear. Her mission is important. And she's committed to making a real difference. Hi, Dimple. First of all, very, very happy new year. And I should tell you that this conversation was something that I always thought should happen last year. But I think the universe conspired to make it happen in the new year. And you'll be my first guest for the UNI podcast in the new year. So welcome to UNI with Rashmi Shetty. Thank you so much, Rashmi. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And I'm glad. I'm happy that uh, I'm the first speaker for 2024. And I'm sure uh, the wonderful message that you're spreading around with the world. Um, we'll have many more uh, wonderful podcasts uh, with many inspiring and beautiful souls who are doing some amazing work. And I'm very proud to be here with you today. Looking forward to this. Likewise, uh, Dimple, because you've been one of those souls who's been doing great work over the last few years. But before we get to your work, I would love to know what little Dimple was like to the Dimple Parma that the world knows you today as. What was your childhood like? Where were you born, brought up? And uh, what was your entire growing up years like? Definitely, uh, Rashmi. So my childhood was uh, uh, in a in a small village called uh, Pashpadra in uh, Badme district. And that's where I um, uh, got born and also spent my early childhood 12 years uh, living with my grandparents and parents. Uh, that's my uh, native. And uh, in that village, a very small village. So um, we uh, studied in Hindi medium. And uh, I was a... a I wanted to do everything. So I was part of many sports and extracurricular and many other activities uh, in early uh, uh, five years and uh, had a good time. My my grandfather was, uh, in his time, he was principal. So I got my tuition, my mentoring, my coaching, everything from him. And then I moved to um, a girls' school uh, uh, in, in you know, six onwards. Um, didn't have really, I would say, um, I, because it was in a very remote place and didn't have access to good education or even better facilities or extra curric. Um, the learning was kind of a bit slow uh, during that phase uh, kind of person. I know me, I wanted to do a lot more during that time, learn more and uh, uh, 
later in later years of uh, schooling, uh, we moved to uh, Badmir. Uh, we moved to Bikaner, uh, where um, I did my next phase of schooling. So I decided that I'm going to go for engineering because mathematics was my favorite subject. While my father wanted me to be a doctor, uh, so I did listen to him and went for biology. That was not my cup of tea. And that too, I challenged myself that I'm going to study in English medium because uh, I knew that the future, it's important to know this and uh, the career decisions and the career growth as well. So uh, I went against, against all odds and uh, did 11th in English medium in biology. And it was a nightmare for me. So I always been the topper since childhood uh, because my, my grandfather uh, and his um, uh, education and everything. And that time I had a big setback and I myself was not happy with what I was doing. So I repeated class 11th and this time I took mathematics uh, and I was uh, in 10th and in 12th. I was among the, uh, I, I actually topped Rajasthan board uh, among girls. I was the first one. So I really um, I had good, good time during that phase. And then I wanted to do engineering. I appeared for IIT and Tripoli and then went to um, MNIT Jaipur where I uh, did chemical engineering. And again, like I, I first time college and I wanted to do almost experience everything. So I did participate in Swift McKay Cultural Society, Zine, uh, Robotic Society. I was part of college seven sports team and captain of lawn tennis and whatnot. So I had great time during those four years. And then I uh, worked with Alliance Industries for two years. Uh, post when I was doing that, I realized that I want to do more. Uh, I want to... Uh, uh, I was I was not happy with uh, uh, with myself. I wanted to really you know expand my horizon into a lot more things. And I always have this uh, had this social angle also within me that I wanted to do something uh, uh, good for people, something that I can meaningfully contribute in the society. But I never got that opportunity. Um, I knew that it's in within me, but I really don't know how to really you know, trans transform that into something. Uh, so I kept on uh, learning things, exploring things, and I was never satisfied with one thing is what I can say about myself, always wanting to do more and more. So uh, I, um, uh, when I, when I, um, uh, when I was working with Reliance, I actually prepared for MBA and uh, I went to IIM Calcutta. Uh, when I went to IIM Calcutta, I again was part of sports seven teams and uh, everything. And finally I was like, okay, this is what I wanted to achieve. And that's where I am today. Um, but I, as I said, I wanted to do more. So I actually um, uh, opened, uh, uh, founded a startup called Zapple, which was into women customized footwear. That was uh, in the first year of college. I was inspired by my classmate, Nitesh, uh, who was also an entrepreneur during that time. And... Uh, wait, wait, uh, one sec, one sec. There is so much you have done, you wanted to do more. But before you stepped into MBA, Dimple, let's take a couple of steps back. What kept telling you that you needed to do something useful to society? You in college, we every college student aspires to be part of everything and be famous in college. Yeah. Clearly, you you got all of it right, and uh, you were there in everything. And I'm sure you must have been one of the most popular girls in college as well. But what prompted you, looking back now, what is it that the bug was that told you that you have to be useful to society? How did that even come to you? So uh, what I can, you know, uh, see looking at uh, uh, my last 30 years or early uh, childhood, when I was in village, um, I knew that, you know, uh, of course, I, I had better facilities in, in terms of uh, my uh, education or in terms of my grandfather's support, other things. So I always, and I was also class monitor for initial 10 years. So uh, I had this within me to support others, uh, but I really didn't know at that time how to really you know, transition, uh, transform this. But when I um, went to um, MNIT Jaipur, that time I got better opportunity and uh, I was uh, giving uh, tuition to a few kids and uh, uh, seeing that where I can contribute. But again, I would say it was not really in that meaningful way I wanted. Uh, at IIM Calcutta, I got better opportunity and that's when I opened a society called uh, Unnati. So as a part of Unnati, uh, we were actually uh, giving tuition uh, to kids of our helpers. So guards and the helpers in the kitchen and uh, hostels. So we formed a society and a couple of us got together and then we started giving tuition to them daily. 
So I got inspired by Vinayak Lohani, who is I am Calcutta alum, and um, today he's running Parivar from last uh, 20 plus years. And um, uh, I was really inspired by the way he has, you know, uh, used his knowledge, education, uh, network, and everything else. And he was inspired by Swami Vivekananda. So um, I said, okay, you know, we have access to facilities, so why not putting it to good use? And then we friends did it together. So that's when I said, that, okay, yeah, I because the satisfaction that it gave me was something which is very different and no matter how much name or fame or everything that you get but that one thing that you do at the end of the day you feel like you have added value to someone's life and even if it's a one hour or 10 hours doesn't matter so that's when I felt that yeah but uh, again as I said that you no know, um things kept on moving forward like studies and I am Calcutta and everything else and uh uh, today, what I'm doing for cancer patients, I believe that that's an opportunity that I got through Nitesh to do something meaningful. And... So bringing in Nitesh now, you said that, so you spoke about Unnati now when you were in IAM camp, but you were also in your first year and you started this entrepreneurial startup with Nitesh. So can you tell us a little on that? And how did you parallelly manage the two? Because one was for profit and the other one was completely for service. Right. So, uh, uh, so uh, when I was in first year, I was running on Nati, which is a, a, a club uh, for, from I am Calcutta uh, campus. And uh, so we kids were, uh, we were teaching kids all together. And secondly, when I started my own startup called Zappel, and Nitesh had his own startup, Appetite. So we both were running and then uh, I got the news that uh, uh, he got diagnosed with cancer. So that was something which was a uh, a big setback for me because uh, a very young person just 25 years of age a very good friend a very uh, inspiring and aspiring entrepreneur uh, some somebody who had a similar childhood as mine and wanted to really achieve something or achieve you know in his uh, life and finally he was at a place where uh, good education a good startup and everything else and uh, this came so when that happened um i uh we, I was kind of doing caregiving for him as a friend. I was uh, touched and I was also uh, feeling empathetic towards him. To, and he was, because he was deeply involved in his startup, he didn't have many friends back in college. So I thought, okay, let me be the one. And um, so the medical treatment and the fundraising, insurance, talking to professors, director in college and everything else, so we moving him to separate uh, units so that he has better facilities or hygiene and everything else. Um, I was taking care of all of it. And parallelly, I was running my startup in academics. Of course, it was not easy. Uh, when I look back now, I really don't know how I did it. Even I mean, even today, when I look back and uh, see what all I have done, um, I really don't know. I, I just believe that when you really want to do something with pure heart and intentions, God just give you power and energy and direction and strength to go through it. And that's what I also felt. Um, so one year uh, went by and uh, we graduated on the same, and in the same journey of one year, we came closure, uh, fell in love. And um, we had to take a decision to pause our startups because uh, health was taking a toll and uh, uh, and the startup was also, we were not able to do justice to the startup also. So uh, we thought that, okay, uh, we'll pause it for some time and uh, so that we can focus on academics because that was one in um, opportunity that we got and we wanted to make the best out of it. And at the same time, um, uh, health was priority. So um, uh, we did that and we got engaged on our graduation day. Um, the one year was very difficult time along with chemotherapy cycles and surgeries and um, the bed rest and everything and the academics. It was really difficult, but we uh, graduated and on the same day of graduation, we also got engaged and finally uh, hoping uh, for a, a new chapter of our lives because last one year was full of struggle. And, uh, and he got cured completely from his uh, No, he was still undergoing treatment and a few cycles were left. Uh, and we were deeply in love by that time and uh, my parents always and always supported us uh, in this journey so uh, my mom just asked me one question that will the cancer come back and I was um, I said no it won't 
uh, for two reasons. One was I really wanted <laughs> to be with him, and secondly, I was unaware how cancer works. So, irrespective, my decision was firm. So, um, uh, we, uh, yeah, so we uh, went back to our homes after graduation, and the plan was to. So, I started my job, and he was also supposed to start his uh, training. Um, meanwhile, um, he went for a routine checkup. And uh, after he finished the treatment and doctor said that, um, uh, he said that I'm going to get married and also I'm going to Singapore for training. So do I have you? Yes. And doctor said that, um, yeah, you look good. Your scans are all, no um, your uh, parameters are normal. Why don't you go for MRI? And he went for the MRI and we got to know in that, that he has stage four cancer. So cancer never went away. It was always there. And this time it is very aggressive. It's in all of his body. It is metastatic stage four colorectal cancer. Um, that time for us, everything just crashed and uh, we had dreams, uh, ambitions. Uh, we wanted to be together. We wanted to do a lot of things. We felt that after that one year of struggling phase, finally we are together and uh, we'll start a new life. But we didn't know that there were dark clouds coming over and uh, um, it took me a few days to come to I mean, absorb this news and uh, uh, his doctor separately told me that he has only six months to live which was something that I couldn't accept or didn't understand and because I always believed that uh, there is always hope miracles do exist um, if the Sati Savitri can bring her husband back from death then so can I and that's the hope and faith that kept on giving me strength to fight through this um, I took sabbatical from my job, which I just started, and uh, I completely dedicated my life towards his care. Uh, he moved in with me, and uh, we started his next phase of treatment. We did fundraising and everything else, and I kept on going through thousands of literatures and speaking to thousands of people, uh, planning for research, cl clinical trials, and everything else across the globe. Took thirty plus opinions. Uh, I wanted to leave no stone unturned, and then just try everything that's possible in the world. Um, I had this hope that he'll be fine. And with that faith, I got married to him. Um, again, my parents were very supportive of this decision and they gave their blessings to uh, do what all I want to do just to make him better. And uh, went to US for clinical trials and uh, advanced treatment. His health kept on deteriorating very fast um, because young age, very aggressive colorectal cancer. And... Um, and we didn't know what to do, what decisions to take, how to navigate through this journey. And uh, in terms of lifestyle, treatment, managing funds, uh, managing side effects, managing relations, home, and everything else, we just were unaware. There was a lot to do. And we are very thankful to our friends and family support who came together and then supported us, did a lot of uh, work, research, and everything for us. Um, we went to US, and that's when... Uh, we were again lost uh, because uh, it's a new country for us and uh, um, it was not as easy as I had imagined. And thanks to uh, Vinay Lohani, I mentioned, uh, who connected us to Karya family, a Gujarati family in US, Los Angeles, who came to meet us. And when they saw us in this condition, um, they were deeply, um, they were very emotional and they they said that you can't survive like this here. You need a proper home. You need love. You need care. You need your you yourself need a lot of care. How will you take care of him? He was in a very bad situation. He lost his voice. His vocal cord got paralyzed. He was continuously coughing. He lost 40 kilos of weight. And he was kind of going through depression. I myself was going through depression looking at him, you know, because I wanted him to get better. And things were out of control completely. His cancer kept on growing. And then that family kind of adopted us. And I. it's been now seven years and I see angels, gods in them who took us in their home, took care of us for eight months. And everything that we needed, everything that he needed, that love, that family, that support, that compassion, that care, we got everything in Karya family. And uh, uh, with time, his condition also started uh, getting worse. Um, and... Uh, we, no matter how hard we tried, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, we lost him in March 2018. Remember that, you know, a few months uh, before his passing, I, I could see him as a very transformed soul uh, who wanted to do something good for people, give back. 
well he himself was on bed rest and um, he said because i always have seen him as somebody who is very sharp focused cut throat or very you know like uh, uh, focused on the success and the power and the name and fame and everything and that time after going through this journey i could see that he was a very humble down to earth person who wanted to give back who wanted to even during that time he was thinking about people so um, and i loved him the most during that time because i really wanted us to be going through that phase together of doing good and you know because we after going through this deep experience we both felt that there is a lot that to be done in this space for people and we ourselves was struggling and suffering and we still had access to the best care and resources but still we were suffering uh, but uh, unfortunately we lost him and um, uh, that's the time i decided to do something uh, good and uh, i i felt that because i was not able to uh, understand why all this happened in just one and a half period years period time two strangers come together uh, both entrepreneurs fall in love take care of each other uh, he got diagnosed with cancer and then caring for him uh, falling in love and then uh, suddenly his cancer coming back and then within 6 months he uh, moved on so um, i was not able to accept to understand and then what i could see and um, i was trying to find the deeper meaning behind it uh, a spiritual purpose and what i could see that perhaps uh, this was the journey that i was destined for to um, because i always had this within me that i wanted to do something good but never got a bright opportunity and maybe god chose me for him so that uh, we can be together at the same time uh, i got this purpose by nitesh uh, to do um, something meaningful so i felt that uh, what about millions of other people who get diagnosed but they don't have access to the information resources and um, most importantly hope so i wanted to give hope to millions and that's the mission that i took on that's the purpose that i could see from his um, uh, journey and i started ngo love heals cancer and uh, while i was working with love heals cancer uh, i i also got trained in us on integrative oncology because uh, i strongly felt that that added a lot of value in his quality of life and also uh, um, in smooth journey so i wanted to go deeper and i got right mentors scientists who supported me in this journey guided me and i came back to india and started love heals cancer while i was working on love heals cancer i felt that the the gaps are huge in cancer care and suffering is real suffering is a lot um, and while uh, ngo has limitations in terms of supporting a particular segment of people or in a particular way there are caregivers like me who was looking for uh, much deeper care and personalized support so um, and i felt that i can actually do both together while catering to both um, uh, kind of uh, segment of people together and um, me and one of my friend kishan from i am calcutta we three were friends he was working with jp morgan investment banking and um, uh, private equity gic and he was volunteering with us and he when he saw the journey and the again the suffering and the struggle of people he was moved and he said that um, with all the the resources the knowledge education and everything that we got we should put it to good use and then start something which can help masses millions so we i and kishan together started zen onco.io uh, onco is oncology cancer care io stands for integrative oncology and zen is peace and harmony and love uh, which i believed in because one may not may not get cured in this journey but one can definitely get healed and that's the healing that nitesh got so i started zen onco.io with kishan uh, and um, today we are running both ventures together lavils cancer and zen onco.io where we are guiding patients helping them end to end and being their companion no matter what their needs are we are always there for them so that's been my journey uh, in this space oh my god this is so powerful dimple you went through a transformation yourself uh nitesh's transformation and yours parallelly happening and then you start this ngo love heals cancer it's such a powerful name uh when you set out on love heals cancer as a name was it the healing that is happening internally for a person who is uh, diagnosed with cancer both as the person the patient and the caregiver is that how you looked at it when you came up with the name love heals cancer 
Right. So, uh, you know what? Uh, so, when Nitesh and I, we were together working on this uh, concept and uh, we wrote in our notebooks what all things we should do and everything. And then we gave this name. He gave this name, How Love Can Defeat Cancer. And uh, when he passed away, I was reflecting over this and I said, it's not a battle to win or lose or to get defeated or to fight. It's a journey to be healed. And uh, I believe that uh, the kind of love and support we received from thousands of strangers who supported us across the globe, from these families who took us in, from nature, from Nitesh, from everybody else, it was healing that we were receiving. So that healing healed him, that healing healed me. And that's how I gave the name uh, Love Heals Cancer. Since you've been through the process, I just want to ask you a question. I'm curious at this point. When you said that healing healed you, uh, how did you realize you were healed? Nitesh moved on. The people around you remained. Uh, you were there alone. Uh, when you say it healed me, uh, what do you mean by the healing process? So uh, when this happened and uh, uh, all of a sudden for me, there was an empty space that's been created. It There was a huge void. And uh, because my entire life revolved around him last two years, uh, all of a sudden he was no more and I had nothing to do. While I was completely devoted, dedicated for him. And I felt like what has happened and why this has happened. There were so many questions I had to myself, to God. And... Um, uh, only one answer I found that perhaps this is the purpose of life. Maybe he had only this much of life and maybe uh, I got opportunity to help him uh, and give him those better few months or days that I could give him. Uh, perhaps this is the purpose that I received through him to do something uh, for other cancer patients. And that's when I realized that I'm healing. Uh, I'm getting healed because if this purpose was not there, uh, I'm not sure what I would have done or what would have happened to me. But uh, only that inner calling that I had. I remember one day I was, so I recorded a lot of videos of myself, uh, talking to myself, talking to God after Nitesh uh, left. And uh, when I was talking to God and then it's it's some, it's more of internal inner reflections. I was talking to myself and then all of a sudden I had this realization that maybe this is the purpose and uh, and I started getting already calls from other people who were diagnosed with cancer from India and um, they were needing some other kind of support. So I already started helping them and I felt that I'm getting better uh, when I'm helping others and I'm you know uh, able to contribute in someone's life because journey was very deep, very deep experience. And uh, that's how slowly, slowly, as I walked on this path, I, I'm really thankful to Nipun Mehta, who's from Service Space, uh, who first uh, gave me guidance, who heard me for hours and hours, my tears and my journey and everything. And uh, and I, I mean, uh, one, one, one more thing I would like to say here, if you know somebody who is going through some deep experience, some, some setbacks, something, losses in their life, it's always good to provide them a ear to listen to and because when they speak and you listen no matter how long it really heals them a lot so I met many wonderful souls like him and he connected me to Michael Lerner who became my mentor in cancer care journey who Michael has 50 years of experience in cancer care so many wonderful souls people who were around me supported me uh, as I started my next phase of this journey and my own patients uh, who were my uh, who are and who were my source of strength when I was navigating through the journey. So I, I, what I understood from this journey that the world is, and Nitesh said the same thing, the world is beautiful and people are wonderful. Uh, if you need help, if you if you need any kind of emotional, any kind of support, uh, societal or anything, you just need to speak it out and there will be many people who will be there to support you. So, and, and that's when I felt that I need to give back. I need to be the same person who also give back to others, the same love that I received. And when we receive, uh, it's it's more uh, when we give back to people, uh, it's not something that you know, we are doing great work. It's just that the satisfaction that we receive when we give is something that's immense. Uh, it's very good. And that is something that I kept on doing and it's kept on healing me and that became my motivation. Wow. And was your state that got reflected in the title as well? Because you were now in that Zen state that it became Zen on code.io. 
yeah yeah so um, uh, then uh, I, what what I, I have understood from this journey that no matter what journey we go through in our own lives personal professional relation anything uh, that we go through ultimately we all are looking for is uh, peace uh, love harmony with self harmony with others in family in office everywhere else and um, when uh, when we go through such deep experiences um, what matters is are we okay uh, are we settled down in our thoughts in our heart in our mind and uh, it's not a question to be answered for others it's a question to be answered for self and uh, i i speak to thousands of patients and what everybody and the most thing that everybody connects with when we talk about love when we talk about this common definition of harmony and peace and that's how the word zen came in because i believe that this word that we all need in our life always yeah because that's a beautiful state to be in but very difficult to achieve uh, with all that is happening around us so here you were love heals cancer and your motive was what to support both the patients and the caregiver yeah. was it a parallel thing that you wanted to do right so I... how did you go ahead like you had a team of volunteers who were reaching out to people who reached out to you how did you carry this journey on you right so uh, when uh, when i started love is cancer and there were many uh, people thousands of other people who were either moved by my own journey or who had uh, cancer in their own families or friends and they wanted to also give back um but one thing that i noticed that uh, people who have gone through this experience they always want to give back and help others in their own capacity uh, in their own meaningful ways so we all got together and uh, because we ultimately we all are connected by a common thread a common purpose of helping patients and people and then uh, so i formed this community of wonderful volunteers who have been through they are survivors they are ex caregivers they are healthcare professionals or they are some people wanting to you know help others so um, uh, um, today we have 10000 plus volunteers and uh, we started um, so first we formed a, a kind of curriculum if you are guiding patients medically or if you are guiding if we are if, if we are patient navigators then there has to be a particular in which we need to guide patients so i i um, got that together and then uh, we started uh, training everybody else and also we started visiting lodging places in dharamshalas where a lot of patients live together so because they need a lot of support be it emotional or financial or uh, because they leave their villages their towns and come to metro cities for treatment and they are completely lost there so any uh, kind gesture that you give them it means a lot to them so uh, so yeah so, so we all got together and then uh, with uh, donations with our own funds with other support we started lavils cancer and we uh, supported patients with healing circles emotional support healing uh, uh, psychology sessions and also uh, with groceries nutrition food supplements uh, sanitary hygiene and um, uh, different needs that they had so we used to visit and then supporting patients with those needs and then more requests kept on coming from other caregivers who were looking for uh, uh, more deeper care and support and they were okay to go to any extent like how i was okay that i want to anything is possible i want to do and that's when we felt that the need is much more than what we are doing so we started for zenonco with uh, our own uh, efforts and then uh, we made this a uh, venture yeah and uh, i was part one of one of your healing circles and i remember the number of tears that were shared and shed uh, when uh, hina was sharing her story so and i realized that it was therapeutic for me though i don't have anyone uh, close right now but i had lost an aunt to cancer and uh, so it was really therapy for me when i sat through that and that was the first time i was sitting through a healing circle but it drained a lot of me as well now when you're doing that day in and day out temple and you're meeting so many people you're listening to so many people you're giving so much of yourself i'm sure you feel drained as well have you ever said no do you say no at all is the word there in your dictionary um i mean it's a very uh, apt question i would say because uh, it does happen to us also our counselors our team members to myself as well 
where we feel at times tired or exhausted or uh, even you know like uh, even seeing that our near or dear patient passed away it it's a it's a setback and then um because we are so connected with our people but uh, one of my other mentor jesh bhai from gandhi ashram and he always say that um do the service uh, that you are doing uh, but then also get detached because uh, if you remain attached then you won't be able to help others so um, it's very very important that when you're serving uh, you're also detached it doesn't mean that you don't love that person you don't care but then it's very very important that so at times whenever counselors they also share their stories with me and then I always tell them that we got a purpose uh, we are here to fulfill that purpose when the patient was there you did your best you did all you could to help them to save them to give them a good life but then a uh, uh, few things are not in our hands like Nitesh's journey um, outcome was not in my hand but process was in my hand so the process was beautiful outcome may not be what we expected but the journey was beautiful and similarly in my in uh, now also in my case when it happens I think um like that's when I was talking about harmony, uh, that it's very important to keep our mind, body, soul in one place, uh, in balance, because uh, it's not a short journey for a few months or years. It's a long journey. It's a marathon. And uh, uh, cancer itself, there's a millions of pa patients, unfortunately, getting diagnosed. And there are many other illnesses also. So if we are, if we are on that mission and if we have that vision, to save and heal lives of cancer patients, we need to first take care of ourselves. And uh, how do we do that? So for me, there are a few practices that really helps me in achieving this. So taking some time off or reading uh, something, uh, spiritual practices, I meditate, I daily do exercise um, and uh, having a very healthy routine lifestyle. So, because uh, it's easy to get lost in everything that we are doing every day. It's very easy to get swayed by that and then, you know, uh, not being able to come back to our core. So, it's uh, we also need a reminder. We also need a wake-up call. We also need a nudge that dimple. Now, it's time to... And that's when we see each other, when we see our colleagues, our uh, Zen mates, and we tell them that, why don't you take some time off? Because it's really needed. So, it's... We all got to be there for each other. And when we say, even when at times I'm not keeping well, Kishan or many of uh, my uh, colleagues, they do say that you really need, you know, some time off. So just take some time off, beat few hours or one day. But uh, so we got to be there for each other. And having these better life practices really helps us in uh, keeping to our core so that we are in harmony when we are here to uh, uh, help others. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. Because detached attachment is a concept from the Gita as well, where he gives the example of the lotus leaf and he says, Padma Patra Mivambasi, be like the lotus leaf, which is in water, but learns how to stay away from it. So yes, it is truly a concept that helps in every aspect of life, not only caregiving, but in your own goals and achieving it, whether you achieve it or not, like you said, the process is all that we can put our best efforts to. Now, as you are looking back at the journey and uh, you are seeing the transformation you're seeing in people around you, is there any particular story, Temple? I'm, I'm sure there are many, but any particular story that instantly brings a smile on your face for the work that you are doing and you are fortunate to have found your purpose also so beautifully tied to the work that you're doing. Any particular story that instantly comes to your mind about, yes, I found my purpose? Yeah, there are many stories. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I think when my uh, Zen mates, when they send me a message or when they call and say that, ma'am, uh, there was this case and then um, there was no hope, absolutely no hope. And in fact, recently it happened. And thank you for letting me share this experience when, you know, one of my colleagues, she came and she said that, uh, Dimple ma'am, thank you so much for approving that uh, uh, budget. I said, okay, which budget what you're talking? And she said that you remember when there was one case uh, who came to center and then they said that we can't afford this much. And uh, uh, and then I came to you and you said that uh, whatever they can, just do that rest we will take care of. 
So I said, yeah. Uh, and then she said that it's been three months and today they are getting better and cancer is reducing. And they are the same people to whom doctor said that you have only few months to live. So, so they came to center again and they wanted to meet me. And then uh, when I met them, they were very thankful and they were very I mean I could see that spark in the daughter's eyes that nothing will happen to her father and because he was improving like anything and for me it was a big big achievement at the same time a very humble deep experience that um, I couldn't say one Nitesh but there are many others I'll be able to add value and um, and my uh, my uh, colleague she said that Temple uh, thank you so much that you know you approved it I was like no it was nothing because my uh, fundamentals are very clear that no matter uh, if a patient can afford or don't afford, but I have told this to all the team members that every patient should take the medicine, must take the therapies or the programs that we have because I know what it can do for them. So whereas everything is secondary, so never say no to any patient um, and everybody has their own um, approvals also that they can do on their own these things. So, I mean, knowing that the one patient could survive uh, because of one small thing that I did or one, the, or the coaches write guidance or uh, they were very hopeless when they came to us because there was absolutely, the cancer was everywhere and uh, it was a very bad situation. I think uh, that's still, you know, when I, when I think about it, it gives, it gives smile and joy at the same time, really humble and proud feeling that... That's one patient I'm talking and there are many others like this. Um, many stories that even I may not be aware, which my team members does. But um, I think a life is a life. And if even if one life we are able to impact, I'm not even talking about saving or healing. I'm just talking about impacting uh, a life. We have fulfilled our purpose because uh, that's the opportunity that we have received. And it's not me who is doing it. It's the mystic law who is doing this, who has given me this opportunity i'm just a medium to make it happen and um, ultimately uh, it's everybody's support together how many hands how many hearts and how many minds have come together to make it happen and it's not one person or one entity it's thousands and thousands of people mentors education support system donors and everything else who have come together to make this happen so to help that one soul it's not one person it's 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 greater than that. Yeah. It's the whole universe that conspires. That's so true. That's so very true. And uh, this podcast was born in the pandemic. You and I is something where I realized that there are so many people going beyond themselves to make a difference to the world. And in the pandemic was the time for reflection. So a lot of us got into a lot of things to understand, mainly into ourselves to see how we can make a difference to the world around us. You, you said in 2018 was when your journey began and the pandemic was in 2020. For a lot of people, it was pause. But what was it for you? Because you must have been in the midst of putting things together and getting things going. What were your uh, experiences from the pandemic and your takeaways from the pandemic? Um... Right. I mean, of course, uh, pandemic, uh, it was not so good time for anybody. Uh, and uh, for us also, we uh, we uh, saw struggle uh, in our patients to be able to get access to the timely treatment because a lot of hospitals were catering to uh, COVID patients and their non-urgent medical decisions were delayed. Or even in some cases, there were urgency, but patients couldn't travel due to COVID. And it did take a toll on their overall outcomes or health. So patients were kind of panicked and scared because one hand it is cancer and second it is COVID. And immunity is very low for cancer patients because of chemotherapy and everything else. So even we were scared that, you know, um, what if we get COVID and then about patients, they have higher chances of getting it due to low immunity. They were scared and there were a lot of uh, panic mode among patients because patients couldn't travel to cities. They couldn't get access to the best of best care. And many times, even if they're in the same city, hospitals couldn't give that care because they just said that if it's non-urgent, we will delay it. But for them, it may be non-urgent. For patient, it is the time to get the treatment. So we did face a lot of such situations and um, 
And that's when we saw an opportunity as well that how can we make the best out of it to be able to give right care to patient at that time itself. So can we really do that? And then uh, we are a startup and startups uh, have agility. They have they are innovators. And then that's when we immediately started collaborations across India with hospitals, doctors and everybody else. And then we started uh, catering to patients, giving them online opinions. And then only and only when critical care is needed, that time we actually help them in arranging to get the timely medical treatment. So a patient sitting in Punjab or Batinda can immediately get a second opinion with the doctor because there's a lot of logistics and coordination and a lot of things involved in this. And even the doctor is available or not, that's also because they were also serving COVID patients. So we, uh, we immediately did that. And also we launched a AI-based tool during that time, which is uh, Zen, Zen Oncolo Dio Integrative Oncology Preliminary Assessment Report, Ziopar. So what it does, and it was also got um, recognition at ESMO. ESMO is European Society of Medical Oncology, which is the body for uh, all the medical guidelines in cancer care. So it got recognized at ESPO as well um, and ESMO and uh, what this report does when patient entered their details and profiles, this, this tool gives them an automatic generative report which tells them about everything about their uh, treatment, how it's going to be. Ultimately, decision is in doctor hands, but at least they get the right guidance that what all type of test and treatment and lifestyle I need to do in order to get better outcomes. So we uh, that got very viral and patients got a lot of questions answered via that report. And at the same time, they got a lot of guidance in terms of how do I lead my lifestyle today um, if you know I have to get through this. So uh, that gave some a bit of relief to our patients. And then second opinion, virtually uh, an access to the uh, care that, okay, that hospital, that doctor is ready to do the treatment for you. So all of that was really helpful for patients. But yes, it was a, a kind of a time that tested all of us. Yeah. Yeah. But I think technology was beautifully leveraged by the humankind in uh, COVID. Yeah. And uh, today, if these conversations are possible, it's only because it became very seamless for us to get online when we wanted to converse. True. Uh, the biggest takeaway. Uh, so uh, Dimple, looking back at your journey so far, uh, how would you like to sum it up? Is there something that you'd like to tell yourself if you look at the little dimple or the dimple in uh, college, in engineering college who wanted to be of service? Uh, what would you tell her now? Um, I would tell my younger self that uh, uh, never give up. You didn't give up then, don't give up now. And uh, be uh, persistent, be courageous, be bold, and always be humble, always be grateful for what you have, what you have done and what it's going to be. And uh, I love a beautiful quote from Mother Teresa that uh, we can do no great things, but only small things with great love. So always have that love, care and compassion at the core of everything that you do. And is there something that you want to tell caregivers because I'm sure these are your life lessons as well. Do you have any separate life lessons that you would uh, leave us with? Uh, do you have anything as life lessons that you hold very dear to your heart or uh, were these three the life lessons that you think you have carried so far? Right. So, um, and it's very important uh, question that you have asked because uh, we caregivers at times uh, forget to take care of ourselves because what I've seen that even I, uh, when I was a caregiver, all of a sudden, we feel that we are super powers or super women or super man. And it's our duty and responsibility. Yes, it is. But then it's not like you have to suffer. Because again, as I said, it's a long journey. And how you are in your mental and physical state will directly impact your patient. So it's not a, a crime and you shouldn't have a guilt if you are taking care of yourself when you're taking care of a patient. I had this guilt many times when I was taking care of Nitesh that, oh, I can't take a break. Oh, I can't sleep well. Oh, I can't eat well. I can't laugh. I can't go out. I can't have my own self-care practices. But what I felt that if I did that, because I did later uh, when I went to US and I had a support system, when I did that, I could see the reflection in Nitesh because of the same. So it's important to take care of yourself. It's this You shouldn't have guilt feeling about this. And also it's okay to give a little bit of 
space to patients in terms of their cheat days and uh, their comfort because uh, I have put a lot of restrictions to Nitesh in terms of eating and his lifestyle. When I look back, I would certainly um, change that because it's completely okay because I've also gone through certain health issues and I would have felt that we do want certain level of control over our health or over our life. It's not like if there's a disease, then everybody, doctor, family, everybody has taken uh, over the control. Patient do want empowerment. They do want choices to be decided by them. So it's okay to give them a little bit of, you know, uh, flexibility to do that because it will add immense level of happiness in them because they are not able to work. They're not able to be, you know, having independent life. And this is what they can independently decide for them. So we can, uh, we should certainly look into that. And taking care of self is extremely important and understanding each other during those times because uh, there's a lot of changes that patients and caregivers go through. Their physical appearance, their behavior, uh, it may not be same always. And that's the time we need to tell each other that I'm there for you no matter how hard it gets. Uh, Dimple, you've shared so much of this journey. And if anyone wants to get into the cancer care space, it, how do they reach out and how can you help there? Uh, yes, Rashmi. So uh, there are many people who want to give back, who want to contribute, who want to support others. And uh, there are different ways in which this can be done. So we have a volunteer program. So uh, we call it Project Disha. So we uh, believe that uh, we are uh, somebody who is giving direction, Disha, to patients and caregivers. So we have this project under which somebody can enroll. And also uh, we will be giving them training certifications post that they'll be able to help patients and families as navigators so they become the cancer care navigators and they can help people virtually in terms of uh, uh, it also depends on their interest if they want to give emotional counseling or they want to help patients with the paperwork or they want to help with navigating through different resources or uh, uh, access to the right information or uh, uh, or the right groups for yoga meditation healing or anything so once somebody enrolls with us and then we can tell them that, you know, where they can uh, contribute to um, to help patients and uh, at times we will want to donate. So we have NGO where which is also ATG registered. So they get tax benefits as well in that and they can donate, which goes to uh, BPL, below poverty line cancer patients and families who take treatment from government hospitals. And um, yeah, so community support, guidance, navigators, uh, emotional support and different kind of supports that one can provide and uh, we can do the right matching for them oh wow so that means i will also share the social media handles that you would share with me i love the smile on your face when you're saying that because you are somebody who was uh, who now takes care of people on both the sides of the coin as a caregiver you've seen that side as a patient you've seen nitesh go through the pain I think this is one of the most balanced ways of looking at life and how you look at challenges of life. Thank you so much, Dimple. I know God has put you with a specific purpose and you really are living that purpose. Shine on, like the famous song, shine on you crazy diamond for whatever you want to achieve because the way you're approaching it is with complete heart and anything done from the heart will definitely have the approval from above. Stay blessed and continue to inspire. An Thank honor you. having you on you and I with Rashmi Shet. Thank you so much, Rashmi. It was a pleasure uh, sharing my journey with you and many others. And uh, thank you so much for having me here and listening to me so patiently. Thank you. <laughs>